Recently, I wanted to create a physics game using more complicated physics bodies than what you can do with BuildBox right out of the gate. Here's an example with a circle. We all know how to take a circle and give it the correct physics shape. so that if I solo this, all of the objects bounce off the circle as they should. But what if I wanted to make this circle hollow with a little space at the top for the balls to fall into and collect? Like this. How would you create a shape for this? Well, there isn't a way right out of the gate with BuildBox. So what I did here was add all these tiny little pieces and slowly rotate them around the edge. Rather tedious, but it works. But what if I wanted to move this? What if I wanted to rotate it like this? How do we keep all of those little tiny shapes, all those physics bodies, attached to the circle so that no matter where the circle goes, the physics remains intact? As you can see, everything's moving as we would expect. Well, it's not terribly difficult, but perhaps a little confusing out of the gate. So let's switch this off and let's see how we do it. First, we'll grab our circle. Actually, I'll make this a little bigger. Maybe something like that. And I want these to be equal. So we'll go 0.7 and 0.7. And put it right about in the middle. So now that when I rotate it, we're going to fill that thing up with balls. And as you can see, it's not working right now. It's hitting the interior physics shape which we don't really want anyway. So we'll turn off the collision and they should just pass right through. Perfect. So let's set up our complex shape. And how we're going to do that is I'm just going to use a box that's the same color as the background of my scene. And we'll scale it down to about the thickness of my circle. Now we have to be very careful when we set these up Oops. because we need to get all of the settings right. If we don't, we'll have to manually go back and set every one to the correct physics settings. So let's be sure to go over here and say physics. We do want these to be collide and depending on whether or not we have enemies we might want them to destroy our enemies. So now that the, the master is set up, now I can create children for this and just slowly work my way around. And this is going to be tedious. All right, as you can see through the magic of video editing, I am almost done adding these rectangles around. And I just rotate them, move them, slide them into place. Duplicate, rotate, move. And this time I'm going to scale this down a little bit. I want to call that done. So there you can see we have our our shapes all the way around the outside. And if I run this, that's terrible. The whole thing falls apart. No problem. We haven't done a critical piece yet. And that is to activate our connection mode. And we need to connect all of these little pieces to the circle itself. So. 
You might think you'd want to do it this way and drag from the outside to the inside, but that's not going to work right. Uh, I actually forget what it does. Yeah, nothing good. So what you actually need to do is drag from the inside to the outside. And what that'll do is connect everything like it's supposed to. As you can see, those pieces I've connected are staying in place. So we'll go all the way around here and connect these. A little magic video editing again. You can see I'm almost done here. One more to go. All right, now they're all connected. I'm going to turn off my debug mode so we see all the connections. We see the white boxes on top of my gray circle, which I am now going to bring to the front. Turn off my connection mode so I can see what it's going to look like, and let's try this out. It's looking like what I'm thinking it's supposed to look like. And as it comes back around the other side, boom, they're all falling into place. And if I turn on the debug mode, we can see everything is staying in place. I've got one kind of wonky one there. I'll probably have to stretch that out so it doesn't move around, which I think we could probably do just to demonstrate, because it is quirky. I'm not sure which one it was. I'll just stretch a couple of these out. Let's see if that does it. So far, so good. Yep, looks solid. All right, let's watch them fall on the center. Everything seems to be in place. Ah, it's loose again. Okay, so it's quirky. I'll have to mess with that. But you get the idea. And you might not even notice in the actual gameplay itself. Whoops. Send to back. Nope, send to front. Back would not be right. And... Okay. And just for fun, I'm going to uh, add some more of these guys. So we can see how they play around in the middle. And boom! Perfect. Everything behaves as expected. So that's how you would create a complex physics shape in this instance. And you can use this method to create all sorts of different shapes. In this case, I made a circle, but you could create landscapes with complex phys physics shapes. You could create just about anything. And with creative linking, you can have it move along with the master object or the parent object.